In this demo, I'm going to show you how we can use custom data sources on Azure OpenAI from an SPFX web part. Very quick about me slide. Uh, my name is Luis Mañez. I work as a chief architect at Click People. I'm a usual contributor of this amazing community and also a Microsoft MVP. And you can find me in the social networks at Luis Manet. So feel free to say hi. Um, yeah, uh, with Azure OpenAI custom data sources, now we're going to be able to easily connect your own data uh, to OpenAI and do like a chat GPT using our, our data. It's pretty cool. Uh, please note that this is still a preview service and a limited access, uh, so you're going to fill um, a pretty long form for Microsoft uh, saying you are not going to, you don't want to conquer the world. And after that, in a couple of days, you should, you should have access. Uh, the link below has more information, but again, this is still a preview and you need um, to ask access for first. Um, Currently, there are uh, three support data sources. Uh, you can connect directly to um, Azure Search Index that supports semantic search, and uh, you can map uh, text fields for, for OpenAI. And also, there's an Azure Blob Storage, and, uh, and you can even manually uh, upload your files directly. Uh, these two last data sources, actually, behind the scenes are also Azure Search, so they are going to create an, a search index behind the scenes, but we're going to see it better in a, in a minute. And um, for this demo, I'm using um, a hotels data set in, in an Azure Search Index. So when you create an, an index, um, you can upload this demo uh, data set. It's coming directly from Microsoft, and it contains just information about different hotels. So this is the one that we are using in the demo. I've enabled semantic search because that's going to improve the, the, the chat experience, but it's not required at all. And this is how it looks, the, the hotels index with the name, description, category, address, rooms, and so on. And this is the configuration of the semantic search. So basically, I'm telling the hotel name is the, is the title field. Then my index has a couple of fields, description and description in French that are content fields. And finally, I have tags and category that can be seen as a keywords field. This is the semantic configuration. This is how the data looks in, in the Azure search. So we have the hotel name, descriptions, address, and so on, different rooms. And let's see it in action. The easiest way to configure a data source is using Azure AI Studio. And this is a tool from, from the Azure portal, and you can play directly with chat, GPT, DALI, and so on. So if we click here and it add your data, we can create a new data source. We have the three options I already mentioned. If you select, for instance, the blob storage, uh, you need to provide your blob storage in Azure, your container, but also you need to provide your Azure Cognitive Search and enter a name for, for the index. Also, that's going to create an indexer. Um, so every hour or daily or whatever you configure here is going to crawl the documents on your blob container and then are going to be indexed in Azure Search and OpenAI is going to use the Azure Search behind the scenes. And if we select the upload files options, we have similar things. You select your, your you, you need to select an, a blob storage resource and a search resource. And then the manual files, the, the manual files that you are uploading are going to end up in the blob storage and are going to be crawled and indexed in Azure Search again. So behind the scenes, everything is Azure Cognitive Search. So this is my Cognitive Search with my hotels index on here that I'm going to select. I'm happy with whatever. Next. And now we are mapping the fields. So for content, uh, let's say all these fields are actually content. These are a uh, single test fields. My file name might be the hotel ID. The title is hotel name. I, I don't have any, any URL in my, in my index, so I skip this one. 
I'm enabled semantic search, and this is my configuration. This is already configured. I'm happy. And you can even apply some kind of security trimming if you if you mark this option. Uh, and let's say you have in your index search a field that contains security groups IDs from Azure ID. You can select that field here. And when Azure OpenAI runs the query to the Azure search, it's going to apply security trimming. So only the documents that the current user um, has a group in that in that security groups IDs is going to be bring back. Uh, it's not my case for this demo. So let's create it. Now we have the data source already on here, so we can do things like find me a luxury hotel. And that's going to run um, the OpenAI query and it's going to use our custom data source. So here is coming back information and, and trust me, this is from my index. This is not uh, real world information. Also, it adds references. This is what is called citations, and this is actually pointing to the real data in Azure Search. So you can check that the information written here is is the right one because you can check why is answering this uh, this data. Okay, this is to configure the data source, uh, and we can take a look to the to the web part in the sample. So the web part has been already. Uh, added to the page and is running is rock and running locally here. So in that case, let's say that find me an affordable hotel. <clears throat> and again, this is running OpenAI. And I can uh, get an option for an affordable hotel and we can say that's it. Offers and fitness center services and it's a iphone another one that one offers finet center and so on so you have the chat gpt um, style here uh, working with your with your own with your own data pretty cool go back to the slides So all of this is is working just running a, a query uh, to an extension endpoint in the OpenAI API, and that endpoint is uh, extension slash chat completion. So you need to do a post request to that endpoint, and there's a data sources array property that you can configure with your with your data source. And in this case, you configure the, the different parameters to connect to that data source. So in this case, it's the Azure Search endpoint, the API key for the Azure Search, index name, if you have the semantic configuration or not, the different mappings, and so on. Basically, this is what we have configured using the, the portal, but here directly in the API. So you don't need the portal. You are just calling the API, providing all the data source information in these parameters. Everything is very well documented in the link below. And also the messages. So you provide the chat history with the different messages. The user asks for this, the assistant, the AI in this case, reply this, user assistant, user assistant. The, the tool role is for the response. And this is how it looks the, the, the response from the endpoint. So uh, actually, the the actual response from the from the assistant is in here role assistant content but you also have this other role tool with with um, another content that is actually a chunk of of json if we format these citations is uh, this json with an array of of items and this is curious because this doc file here is actually referencing the, the five item in the citations. So this is how, how it works. This is not actually documented, but per my test, uh, this is how it works. So you can get the reference from the citations. Um, okay, and about the source code, um, we have the, the web part, and the web part have a, a main auto finder component, React component. 
uh, that component is um, getting the HTTP client from the SharePoint framework. And also here I'm initializing the graph uh, toolkit because I'm using the persona component to render the current user profile picture. In the main React component, the our hotels finder, um, we have uh, another component with the, the list of messages, the, the chat history, and another one with the test diary and, and the button. And uh, there's a on query send method, and this method is using a class called completion service. We'll see it in a minute. Um, this is the one that is making the call uh, to the open API in this get completions method. And we pass the chat history, the different messages, and the current uh, user query that just the user has typed in the in the test area. And once we get the response, we just update some, some state variables. And this completion service class uh, gets the HTTP client from the from the context and in the completions methods. Uh, we are creating a completion request builder object um, that's going to help to prepare all the um, JSON for the for the body request. Uh, we add the different uh, messages from the history, so user assistant, user assistant, user assistant. We configure some some headers, and finally we do that post request uh, to the Open API extensions endpoint. With the with the body of the request, the body of the request is built uh, with this request builder, and basically here we configure the data source. So the type is Azure Cognitive Search, and then we provide the different uh, parameters, endpoint, API key, index name, fields mapping, and and so on. And uh, there are other parameters just related with uh, the max tokens and temperature and so on for the Open AI. And we have just uh, some helper methods to, to add the different uh, chat history, user and assistant messages. And that's pretty much from, from the code side. The sample is already available in, in this URL, so feel free to download and, and give it a try. Please remember that everything is still preview, so this web part is kind of experimental. And that's all. Thank you very much for having me and back to you, Tim. Thank you.